JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 2nd. I am Harlambos Pistouros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian morning Thursday. It underperformed the most versus NOC, GBP and NZD in that order while it lost the least ground versus CHF, the Yen and the Aussie. The greenback act out some gains only against the Canadian dollar. Now the weakening of the dollar and the other safe havens combined with the strengthening of the QE suggests that uh, risk appetite continued to improve. However, the fact that the Aussie was among the currencies which gained the least versus the greenback points otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices closed in negative territory, but during the US session, sentiment improved with both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq gaining 0 0.50 and 0.95% respectively. Dow Jones finished 0.30% lower. The relatively sanguine investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although Japan's Nikkei traded virtually unchanged, China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 1.52 and 1.62% respectively. The reasoning behind the slide in the EU indices may have been comments by German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who said that uh, EU members are still far apart on agreeing over a recovery fund. She also said that uh, the EU must be prepared for Brexit talks to end in failure, though the pounds shrugged off uh, those comments. Sentiment improved during the US session following reports uh, that a coronavirus uh, vaccine developed by Pfizer and German biotech firm BioNTech found to be tolerated in early stage human trials. A bit uh, US data may have also helped the rebound in equity markets. Although the ADP report revealed that the private sector gained 2.37 million jobs in June, less than the 3 million uh, forecast, May's print was revised up to 3.07 million from minus 2.76 million, while the ASM manufacturing PMI returned into expansionary territory for the first time after three months of contraction. Specifically, the index surged to 52.6 from 43.1. As for today, market participants may lock their gaze on the official U.S. employment report for June. The reason we don't get the report on Friday is because U.S. markets will be closed in celebration of the Independence Day. Non-FAR payrolls are expected to have increased 3 million after rising 2.51 million in May, while the unemployment rate is expected to have declined to 12.3% from 13.3%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have declined 0.7% month over month after falling 1%, something that, uh, barring any major deviations to the prior monthly prints, would drive the year-over-year -year rate down to 5.3% from 6.7%. Such a report would be an encouraging development, as it would show that the US economy is on the road to recovery despite the nation's infected cases from the coronavirus keep increasing at a fast pace. Yesterday, the minutes from the latest FOMC meeting revealed that policymakers agreed to use all the tools available in order to support a recovery from, from the recession caused by the coronavirus spreading. Thus, combined with the Fed's willingness to do more in order to stimulate the US economy, an improving labor market could prove positive for the stock market and, oddly, negative for the US dollar, which has been acting as a safe haven following the coronavirus outbreak. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, uh, uh, Eurozone's PPI for May, the US initial jobless claims for last week, and Canada's trade balance for May are uh, coming out. 
Eurozone's PPI rate is expected to have declined further into the negative territory to minus 4.8% year over year from minus 4.5%, while the US, the US initial jobless claims are forecast to have slowed to 1.36 million from 1.48 uh, million the week before. Canada's trade deficit is anticipated to have narrowed to 2.50 billion Canadian dollars from 3.25 billion. Tonight, during the Asian morning uh, Friday, uh, Australia's uh, retail sales uh, for May and China's Kaijin Services PMI for June are coming out. Australia's retail sales are expected to have rebounded 16.3% month over month after tumbling 17.7% in April, while no forecast is available for China's Kaijin Index. As for the speakers, we have three on today's agenda. ECB Executive Board members Yves uh, Mersch and uh, Isabel Schnabel as well as uh, Deutsche Bundesbank Executive Board member uh, Joachim Wermeling. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.